This video is going to be about electron shells, electron orbitals, and valence electrons. So we're going to start out by drawing the Bohr model of a neutral carbon atom. So here we have our nucleus. So we know from looking at the periodic table that a carbon atom has an atomic number of six, which means that it has six protons in its nucleus. And we also know that we can figure out the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom by subtracting the atomic number from the atomic mass, which for carbon is 12 minus six. So we have six neutrons also in our nucleus. So now we also know from the video on subatomic particles that electrons are not found in the nucleus. So they're actually found outside the nucleus in something called electron shells. So these electron shells are going to radiate outwards from the nucleus like this. And as those electron shells get farther and farther away from the nucleus, the electrons in those shells are going to have higher and higher energies. And so now within each of these electron shells, we have something called electron orbitals. So an electron orbital is a three dimensional area of space where an electron is predicted to be found about 90% of the time. And each orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons. So in this first electron shell, we only have one orbital. And so that means that this shell can only hold two electrons. Go ahead and draw those in. And we also know that since this carbon atom was neutral and we have six positive charges, we need six negative charges. So now we've used two electrons. So that means we have four electrons left to put in this last shell. So this last shell has four electron orbitals, and each one can hold two. And we have four electrons left. So that means that we've only filled up two of the four orbitals in this shell. So now that we have this whole uh, diagram drawn out, we can look and pay closer attention to this outer electron shell. So this shell is called the valence shell, and these electrons are called valence electrons. So valence electrons are the most important electrons in an atom because they're the ones that are actually involved in making chemical bonds, and uh, they're the ones involved in these biological and chemical reactions. So these electrons, are super important. So carbon is going to have four valence electrons, which means that it can form four bonds with other molecules. So if you don't have time to draw out the Bohr model, an easy way to figure out the number of valence electrons an atom has is if you look on the periodic table, um, so they, each of the columns is going to have a number above it. So if we go over to our nonmetals, um, that's going to be column numbers 13 through 17, and then the noble gases would be column 18. Carbon is going to be found in column 14. So if you look at the second number of the column number, that tells you how many valence electrons that atom is going to have. So for carbon in column 14, the second number is a 4, and we have 4 valence electrons. For chlorine, for example, that's in column 17, the second number is 7, we have 7 valence electrons. So another important thing to remember about valence electrons is that all of the elements in one column or a family is going to have um, similar chemical reactivities because they all have the same number of valence electrons. So that just serves to demonstrate, once again, how important these electrons are in determining the chemical characteristics of an element. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.